Hey, what's up, everybody? You're watching Cheeky Garage. My name's Tommy Cheek. If it's your first time here, welcome. If not, welcome back. And today, I got some good news. I finally figured out what I needed to do to make the clutch master cylinder work in my 1993 S10, the LS1 T56 swap. And I want to share with you guys what I had to do. A little problem with uh, the clutch master. I had thrown it on there. Um, probably wasn't a good idea to just throw it on there anyway. I probably need to bench bleed this anyway. But regardless, uh, this is the stock clutch master from the 1993 S10. That's what was on there. Probably nothing wrong with it, but I'm just replacing everything at this point. So I had ordered one. Boom. Stock replacement stuff. Okay, looks like a master cylinder. Uh, it is metal, whereas this one is plastic. Not sure if you can hear that. Um, other than that, I mean, they look pretty much the same, right? Uh, the the mounting flange bracket deal, everything, you know, looks like it's going to jive. It does not, however. Try to line these up for you best I can. Let me get it off this messed up sticker here. The metal one is longer by, you know, the body is probably a good half inch longer. Um, the clutch fluid reservoir barb fitting comes out of the side of the casting, whereas the barb on this one kind of comes off of the end. And this part of the master on the very end of the body uh, made hard contact with the hooker headers so I gotta get another master alright here's the new master cylinder uh, it's a plastic bodied one never mind the uh, the silver stuff and uh, months ago when I ordered some heat wrap material I got some free oil filter heat wrap uh, and that's all this is adhesive back heat wrap just to try to uh, give this chance a shot at life um, and then this fitting here is just a little fitting that goes from the GM uh, o-ring roll pin style to dash 4 an other than that this is how it came from the parts store and let me show you what I found out all right so you can see the master cylinder in there. I'm just holding it up. I haven't bolted it because I'm going to show you what I actually had to do to get it to get it right. Sorry if the lighting's not the best. I've just got a bunch of lights on this, so y'all can hopefully see what I had to do. But in uh, in stock trim, I'm trying to get down in here. You can see the uh, that little fitting. It's not touching but it's just I mean you're not getting the hose on there uh, it's pointed straight at the header and it's like well damn so you know for a brief minute I'm, I'm looking at aftermarket master cylinders and all that and it's like alright let me take a step back and try to figure this out because I find a bunch of conflicting information on the internet as far as lines and blah 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 T56 swapping S10s, but the general consensus what in the world is going on with the light? The general consensus is uh, that the stock masters work. So I made it my mission to make this one work. Alright, so took it back off. I'm looking at it. And it's like, what needs to happen? It's like the index of this, like this plane here damn sorry about the uh, thunderstorm if you guys could hear that um, but this plane here needed to be you know clocked indexed in relation to the plane at which this mount mounts to the firewall and I'm looking at it and I'm not sure if you can see it in that camera but it looks like it's two pieces there 
And I was like, okay, well, maybe I can just spin it. And uh, problem solved. So that's what I tried to do. So you come around to the back. There's a little cap. You gotta pull the cap off. And then deep down inside, uh, both my stock one when I was looking at it, as well as this one, the snap ring was like buried over here on the deep end, and I couldn't get my snap ring pliers in there. So I had to take two small flatheads and kind of screw with it and and get it rotated around. But uh, once you get it spun around, you can take your snap ring pliers and get that snap ring. And I do not have the best snap ring pliers. Mine actually kind of sucked. But so if I can do it, you can do it. But you wrestle the snap ring off of here. Okay, so snap rings off, and then bada bang, bada boom. So I'm looking at it, and you'll see. Hopefully, you can see. I'm trying to work around the camera here. You can see. Can you see that? There's a little. Uh, there, you can kind of see it. A little piece of like key stock, if you will. A little, a, a little molded. Let me take the gasket off. There we go. Uh, just a little keystock piece molded in to prevent this thing from rotating in that in the in the bore of the uh, of the mount. And you can see, imagine this one not being here. That's how it's indexed as it comes. So I put it, I took it and put it back together without the snap ring and just kind of sitting on that, you know, kind of just out like that. Stuck it up against the firewall and rotated it to where uh, I liked it. And I made a little mark with a sharpie where the piece of key stock was sitting. And I took a Dremel and matched that one as best I could to put a second keyway in it. And then, where'd the gasket go? Then I just put it back together, except in the new keyway. Come on. Boom. And then put the snap ring back on. And boom. There it is, back together. And now you can see. So if it bounced to the firewall, kind of something like that, you can see that we're indexed much closer to vertical. Whereas it used to come out like that and it hit the header now our pressure lines going straight down or very or much closer to straight down and our uh, remote reservoir line is much closer to straight up so let's go test fit it okay try to get in here in all these lines but now you can see we're not touching the header like we were with the with the metal one it's close it's I mean probably three-eighths of an inch or so which is why I uh, went ahead and heat wrapped it uh, but instead of our fitting pointed straight at the header we're pointed actually kind of straight down I'm gonna let go of it. it's not bolted yet but I'm gonna let go of it but we're pointed more straight down and just kind of right towards the bundle of, of fuel lines and stuff that we're gonna run it with and then our remote reservoir can go from there and loop on up to there so good deal now I gotta bench bleed this thing get it on uh, make sure it works and I'll report back okay it's in there it's bled we have a fully functional clutch now just want to show you the, uh, the final product here master cylinder you got the, the special fitting there this is the dash 4a inline it runs down under the truck. I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, I went ahead and just bought, it was a pre-made, uh, either 30 or 36 inch line with a 90 already on the end of it. Dash 4 on both ends, and I'll show you how I'm adapting it under the truck. Uh, I believe 
this was a Tilton. I'll have to double check on that. Uh, but this is a 5 16th ID uh, piece of hose that's meant for brake line. Uh, my stock one was looking pretty rough. The outside of it was kind of looking almost scaly. It was kind of bubbling up. Uh, so I figured now there's no better time to replace it than right now. So that's that. Uh, and I just put some <laughs> bit of heat shielding on here. Um, I think I pretty much am gonna have to uh, to wrap at least this one primary here. Uh, it's just kind of close to everything with some header wrap. But that's where we're at here on the firewall side. We'll crawl underneath, show you what we got going on under there. Okay, we're under the truck. I had to take my microphone off, so hopefully audio's still tolerable. Uh, we're facing the front of the truck. This is the bundle of uh, fuel lines and the clutch line and the speed bleeder line coming down along with the brake line, the hard brake line on the driver's side frame rail. And then I've just got a gentle little loop here. And then it's coming back and then 90s in with the use of a, an Earl's fitting that goes from the GM quick disconnect on the slave cylinder to a dash 4 AN. And uh, it, it worked out really nice. I mean, is this what everybody needs to do? Probably not. I don't know. But with the way I routed my exhaust, just coming straight out, uh, it was going to put it really close to the bottom of the header there. And I just felt much more comfortable just running a 90 and then uh, just kind of bringing it back towards the rear of the truck a bit. And then looping it around just giving myself plenty of room here so that's pretty much all there is to see under the truck and uh now we'll go in the truck all right we're back in the truck now got my light pardon the mess bomb has uh, seemingly gone off in here but anyways we uh we got three pedals frame brake gas little light Throttle body springs a little, a uh, little on the weak side, but most importantly now, we have a nice firm clutch pedal. Let's see if, uh, if I can get some synchros. Maybe not just happy, right? So there. That's about as good of a test as I can give you right now. I'm here by the, I'm here by myself, so I can't, uh, you know, turn the wheel, turn the tire, and all that stuff for you. But we got us a nice firm clutch pedal, guys. I'm super pumped. Look at this Cavalier steering wheel; she's a beaut. But uh, that's gonna be it. That's gonna be me. That's gonna be the end of me rambling today. And uh, hopefully, you guys like what you see. Uh, hopefully. You know, maybe this helps somebody. I know there's a lot of misinformation out there on the internet. Again, just for clarification, this is for a uh, a stock 1993 Chevrolet S10. It originally had a 2.8 liter. It's a stock clutch master cylinder mated to a T56 slave cylinder for like a uh, you know Fortune Camaro, uh, just a standard GM one. Mine happens to be in a T56 Magnum. That should not make a difference. Uh, and the fitment on the firewall and the headers and all that stuff. Um, I'm using the full Hooker Blackheart, you know, S10 LS swap line of parts. The headers, the mounts, the trans cross member, everything. Um, if if those parts are something that you're interested in, I can, uh, I'll put a video card in the corner here right now. Uh, to link to a video I've done on a review of those parts. But anyways, LS1, 93S10, stock, clutch master, to a T56. Um, anyways, I'm out, you guys. And, uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment below. But hey, man, till next time, y'all have a good one.